What is up down and sideways, you beautiful individuals? Welcome back. It's Lee Con Lock, Eric and Mark here with you guys, and it is the EU's turn. L E C E M E A, whatever you want to call it. We're doing the preseason player rankings, all five rules, and yes, there's ten per position still out in EU. <laughs> this ain't no LCS easy street. Ah. Rolling through 1 to 8, it is the full deal 1 through 10 for the LEC. And you might be seeing quite a lot of new faces. And that's nothing new for an LEC power ranking. But I think this year is another notch above how many replacements, how many swip swap in a places are we getting for this brand new 2024 LEC seasons. And you can talk about rookies in pretty much every single role heading into the year. Top plane, no exception you got myron i'm not i'm calling him myron regardless because i'm, I'm gonna be myron in this guy the whole time because of his spicy picks debuting with mad lions he's got a spot ahead of irrelevant sandwiched in between photon who had a definitely down final two splits of 2023 yeah, but I am I'm willing to take the risk this year. I'm going in on on Photon. I think that he is going to have that bounce back here for the squad. He certainly has to have that bounce back here for the squad to cement not only his place obviously as a starting player in the LEC, but really for just that experimentation of what he represents in the LEC to try to ex expand that top lane horizon, try to bridge the gap that has been showcased at multiple international events in that position specifically. If Photon can perform the way that he is built, the way that his potential, the way that history tells you he can, it could pay off big time in the LEC. We got a pair of fanatic top laners side by side in Oscar Rinnen and Wonder. Obviously, Wonder, incredibly difficult to judge on that tiny sample size he did have with Fnatic, where he hadn't been playing competitively for a long time. And then you got Oscar Rinnen, who the trajectory that he hit, I am so excited to see this guy with another full year under his belt because he was looking damn good at Worlds against some of the very best. Given time, Oscar absolutely grew into the role for Fnatic and really grew into the role to show you that there is a road if you keep him in that top lane where you can find success, where you can count on him to improve as a player. And I think that is gonna be a big requirement for Fnatic to take that next step to be into that category of team that they want to be in into this competitive scene of the LEC. And Wonder is a great re-addition, we'll call it this year. Never really felt like he stepped too far away from the competitive scene and the LEC starting roles, but he is back full-time, fully committed. And I think this is still a player that is gonna provide a lot of excitement for, play, uh, for fans and showcase exactly the career that he has built already for himself in the European region. And maybe the team with the biggest chip on their shoulder is gonna be heretics when you have guys like Perks and Wonder who are here to prove that they're not washed up and their former glory days are long since behind them. Odawamne, Mr. Consistent in that number four spot, even when Excel was struggling, he was still absolutely going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best top laners in the LEC. And then starting the top three, you got Cabo Shard returning to the LEC. It's been a long time. We've been talking about this guy professionally since like the 2015 Gambit, if you want to go way, way back. But he's been smurfing in EU Masters for three plus years now, and I can't wait to see this dude back on the big stage. Flat out, this is the exception. Someone like Kavashard being able to vault right into this type of position you, it would never happen in any other type of region, any other type of situation. Given the environment, the climate that Europe has with their minor leagues, uh, you know, lower tier league system, and the way that that competitiveness kind of sh shares on through, Kavashard has been tested, and he has been continually showing us that he is a top tier option, regardless if he's playing at that top or bottom level. Him stepping right back into this LEC role is going to be something that I think a lot of people have been waiting for, and I think is going to be another good power playing top laner necessary to change the scene in the LEC. Not enough to crack that top two. I think the top two is easy to pick Adam and Broken Blade. Maybe you want to discuss the order, but based on World's performances, which is the last we saw out of the two of them, hard pressed not to put Adam one. Flat out difference makers. Yes, and it is one of these ones where I think throughout the course of the whole year, you're looking at Broken Blade and what he did for G2 and still had a big moment at 
worlds for g2 that crucial yone ultimate to make sure that they are picking up one of unfortunately only two wins at the event for them that is adam coming through to sweep in and take it the way that he performed for bds all the way through their play-in stage and the challenge that he provided still at that main stage showcasing his god's champion and it's one of those things you look at this year and you realize yes i think we can all count on that double check mark not even just a single one the double check mark that we're getting a healthy dosage of those god's champions showcasing why he is strong but we know that if bds is going to continue to that next level adding a couple of other wrinkles adding another pocket pick here or two could provide major value for bds and I'm sure that's what priority number one was in the offseason for both BDS and Adam. Slide into that jungle spot where we level up to two rookies. Uh, Daglas technically not a rookie because he's had some games uh, with Vitality, but I think he still falls under whatever the rules are. But uh, Isma, one of the most hyped up jungler rookies coming in as well for SK and then Peach in between them. But I'm immediately drawn to Bo at number seven on this list. And we did these rankings. You go back to last preseason and we're saying, ah, Bo number one, he's gonna be the MVP. He's gonna be the best player in the entire league. Obviously not how things ended up playing out, but I would be shocked if we were talking about Bo as the seventh best jungler as this season goes on. Now, if we limited the LAC season to a very specific one, two, maybe three weeks, I think we were right about Bo when talking about how he could be number one. Unfortunately, the LEC seasons, never mind the entirety of everything, is of course much longer than those three weeks. So needing Bo to be at that tip top shape of performance individually, as well as the rest of the things going on with the team is gonna be a major factor. Similar to Photon, Bo is another one of these players that finds himself in the category of, you gotta put up in this season. You gotta put up these numbers or else you're finding your spot taken out. And that is what he lived. That's what, with the feverish K Corp fans, will be putting towards him as that starting jungler. Uh, Markoon and Shao in that 5 6 spot. Markoon, super excited to see him in a new environment with Rogue, with some veterans around him. And Shao, I think, was often criminally underrated on that Team BDS because he was so vital to getting Adam ahead early a lot of the time and just running the early game so two younger guys that i'm excited to see develop with bigger roles in their respective organizations and then i think the top four easiest part to do on this jungle spot starting with razork who i know consistency has been an issue but in the games that mattered the most in summer season finals and worlds we saw the good razork for a little bit of that winter split and then yes pretty much the entirety of that summer split and fanatics run at worlds you saw the razork that he needs to be for fanatic to be one of these pinnacle teams in the lec he is a vital vital part of what goes on in this organization for the health systems of everything for all the lanes everything else getting it going if he is in sync with the rest of his team that is the big part the rest of the team not just one or two individual members it's got to be everybody on that fanatic lineup then you're hitting the mega payload. And you're going to have to do that to compete with the big three because even though El Yoya's responsibilities are at an all-time high now with four rookies around him, we'll see if that takes away from his individual performance or if, you know, he's revitalized and renewed with all these young players around him. And it's kind of the opposite for Yankos. Old Grandpa Yankos in number two with perks and wonder and all the veterans coming, but... I think we all we forget just how good Yankos was when the rest of his Heretics roster was not looking so good. It's it's insane, and I think it's partly because he's so good at content creation on everything outside the Rift and what a future career path could be that you forget that the on Rift product is still tip top not shape. It is all you want from a jungler, and I think unfortunately for the Heretics. Not everything was going right in order to capitalize on that great performance last year from Yankos. Bringing in the old crew, Mr. Perks, Mr. Wonder, definitely upgrades in individual positions. And I think that this is going to set up Yankos to have a mega year and really reestablish that he is the king of the LEC jungle. And luckily, G2 not sitting there going, oh man, we've missed Yankos, he's looking so good on Heretics. Because the little known rookie that they got ended up picking up Rookie of the Year and was 
honestly, at times, the best player on this Stack G2 roster. Yike, no question, number one heading into the season. Yes, and I think that this is going to be a fantastic year from him. No sophomore slump. And I know, I'll be careful because I've said no sophomore slump. And then we've seen a sophomore slump from a guy. But someone like Yike, what we've seen, the system that is in place around him with G2, the players there, as well as the experience that he has gained from MSI and this most recent run at Worlds. And knowing that it needs to be that turnaround, I think you can look within and find it within your own set of skills, Mr. Yike. And maybe even see a little bit of growth. Maybe the Belvat is perma banned against him. Maybe there's another spicy pick that's going to end up coming by because that's just the way that Yike is. We love to see the off meta action. Mid lane now again. Rookies come in. Two full rookies. Saken, not a rookie because he's been in the LEC before, but fresh blood coming into the scene and. That's why we're usually conservative, even with some of these more hyped up guys. Uh, you know, Fresco, he was on Movie Star Riders, went to the finals. But the two rookies hanging out towards the bottom, there's room for growth, but you got to give acknowledgement to the rookies. Even guys like Nuke and Niski, who maybe weren't fantastic at Worlds, they still had a decent full year of work. I think it's tough to be super positive about certain positions in the LEC and go over the board with it type of thing. But I think the depth that is here in the mid lane is something that does need to be recognized going through these LEC lists as you outline a couple rookies padding it out at the very back end, but immediately into players like Nuke, into Niski. Nuke showing big strides at the world event that we saw from him on that big time stage with all the lights. He can rise up, be another threat for this BDS team, takes away the pressure, takes away that attention and focus towards gods. And Adam might be easy, easing it up, and that is another avenue that you can exploit if you are a BDS squad. Same thing goes for Niski with SK. That veteran, that leadership, that role that he is going to play and how well he facilitates his jungler with a rookie jungler for now this season, going to be a big thing to keep an eye on. And it's going to be a big thing to see a bounce back from Perks. I know he's... His stock is kind of at an all-time low because it's usually uh, about $3 million if you're talking uh, Cloud9 or stuff. But seeing him be reunited with Yankos and taking some of the pressure, I think, off of him in terms of communication that he had on Vitality, I'm expecting a resurgent year out of Perks. He doesn't have to be the all-ends, be-all type of guy. And I know that that wasn't necessarily how things were supposed to shape up with vitality but the level that you got from upset in the bot lane what you had with bow and what you had from photon and the way that they're playing none of it was going to work out no matter how good perks was which actually if you look at the individual numbers he was relatively strong throughout the entirety of the year and especially strong towards the end of it through that summer split that's what you're banking on looking at that type of return to form return to focus return to commitment on trying to be the very best and trying to win, reunited with Yankos and Wonder, taking it a little bit back, some of that pressure on being the guy, being the one always making the calls, can be a good thing in this situation. And we're putting some respect on the faker of EU Masters. Saken returning to the LEC in an infinitely better situation with K Corp than he was uh, way back with Team Vitality. And this guy's been the best mid laner in the ERLs or in that conversation now for like three plus years and has done it time and time again on that biggest stage at the EU Masters. He's been consistently growing and you know, it's one of those things where it's hard to sell people on that type of growth when it's not happening on a stage as big as the LEC or as consistently in front of their face or brought to the front of Reddit type of thing. But he has been very consistent and very good throughout that course away from the LEC stage. And just like Kavishard in another situation where this guy can jump into this type of spot, given the environment, given what we're expecting with K Corp and can see some good things happening. And I think if you're a Saken believer, if you're still hanging on to that one, now is your time to shine. Ahead of him, a couple of guys, Larson and Viteo, who you're always, you know, their main knock is maybe sometimes they're too passive. You want to see more playmaking out of them, but there's no question the consistency and reliability that they both have, and they're never being a net negative for their team. So that consistent spot has to be in the top four. And then it's a very familiar top two. Humanoid remains one of the most frustrating players to watch in the entire league because when he's on, he's he's right there with Caps as the best mid laner in Europe, but 
How often is he completely at that level? And how often is he, you know, uh, just dying 1v1, randomly getting caught out? So the, the potential is still always there for him. It's about limiting the, the lengths, the extremes that you get with someone like Humanoid, because we went all the way through it last year, all the way from get this guy out of here, this cannot be the way you're going for, whatever, to this is a player you build your franchise around. You have him, you build around all these type of things. That's the type of power that he has in the LEC when he's playing right. That's one of the big things that you're looking for. I just want to remind people, pretty much you can include number five in this one as perks, but really this top four, MVP caliber. That's what you're looking at here in the LEC. When you're looking at these players, you can look at, you know, as you laid out, Larson, Vitao, and sure, you can have little individual things. You can have things that you want at various other times, but these are players when they're playing at their best that are MVP caliber guys, really top-notch stuff. And of course, a tale as old as time. Say what you want about current form caps. You're still not putting any mid laner in Europe ahead of him. I, to be honest, and this is not meant to disparage anybody else, I don't think anyone's even sniffing in territory of caps of where he is at, how he performs, the type of creativity that he's able to bring in. Let me remind you, we were having some Zach mid lane games, Sejuani mid lane games going on early in the year. Caps can do it. He can bust it out. We've even seen the creativity at the world stage recently with that old Nico trick with the cannon minion under tower, which, by the way, that's been nerfed. That's been taken out of the game, thankfully. But yes, Caps reigning supreme at number one. Blessed Caps being our balanced team as well as our <laughs> EU star mid laner throughout his entire career. Slide into the bot lane for the AD carries. Only, I mean, I guess there's two rookies. Supa's the main one for Mad Lions. Ice, technically a rookie coming to replace Crowney, and that remains the one off-season move that I think left everyone going, that's the move you want to make if you're BDS? It's a questionable one because I think really you look at this list and you figure a name like Crowney and where you'd want to put it in after last year, even being maybe a little bit down on him due to the performance out Worlds and that champion pool and everything else, you'd still be slotting him maybe sixth at seventh at worst i would feel it is a crazy world to believe that we are without crowny but that is the type of case that we are in and you know i will say the 80 carry spot much like mid lane is looking pretty good because guys like patrick and exekick who maybe weren't at their peak levels in summer are still they can be all pro level 80 carry so having them at you know seven eight seems harsh but it's just a damn good pool because karzy at times looked like a top three AD carry, and at times, he looked like a bottom three. It's really going to be about which one you're getting. That is going to be the whole question mark, and unfortunately, it's not just down to the individual player. Cars, he's absolutely somebody that gets propped up or, or put down type of level based on what is A going on with the support and their synergy going on there, and the rest of the team is going to be a major factor on the environment on that it's in, and whether Carzy is going to perform, feel comfortable, those type of things are big things. If he does hit, he is a top tier type ADC. He is someone that you absolutely can swing team fights around his skill alone. We do need to see more of that and more often because it has been some lean years for the Karzy fans. And unfortunately, he's with a bit of a psychopath support. Uh, and Mr. Hilly coming over, which we'll get to uh, when we do supports. But Flackett rounding out the top five. He was really the second most consistent guy outside of Yankos for Heretics all of last year. Excited to see him paired up with Kaiser and how much of a feature he'll be on this new lineup. Comp is much like Larson, just Mr. Consistent, even though he wasn't at as high a level in 2023 as he was the year before. Still a premier AD carry in the LEC. And then you go to Mr. Noah with and now Korean support alongside him. We're going to see how important and integral Trimby was to this bot lane success. I think that, you know, that obviously is a, a very good importance to that. And I don't want to you know diminish that. And yes, flat out, I am biased. I am a Trimby lover. Love him in the bot lane. But we got to be saying you're moving on. And yes, you are moving on. And the big piece stand is, of course, Noah. And the potential that he showed us last year, taking the reins for Fnatic and really taking over the bottom lane in the LEC for that summer split. Very dominant player. One of the, the guys that I think you really do not want to be letting that Kalista over to because he can make it a real quick work in the bottom lane. 
and you know we've seen so many people struggle on that pick but Noah is a guy you build an entire comp around when he's on something like that he was so unbelievably confident and aggressive the minute he played his first game with Fnatic I know people might be upset about upset at number two after not playing for so long but do we really have any doubt that this guy is immediately going to come in and be one of if not potentially vying for the best ADC in the league your question then becomes whether you believe that the trajectory and everything else surrounding Vitality is partly because of what we see with Upset and his declining in performance or awareness, all these type of things, or you go, that's the anomaly. It's not what was supposed to happen. There were so many other things going wrong with Vitality. It wasn't just Upset, all these other type of things. And you recenter back into what you know about the player and his career, and you see that consistency. You see that threat that he can represent in a team fight. That's what you're going for with upset at number two. And still, obviously, easy number one is Han Sama. Uh, you know, you can even remove the Draven pick, which is his most lethal thing he has on the Rift. But uh, just a fantastic bounce back from a lackluster run in NA. He was pretty much the best 80 carry from start to finish of 2023. And you can throw in his support was the best support for all of 2023. Mickey, obviously uh, number one on those supports, picked up MVP for the year. I think Broken Blade was the only guy who wasn't number one from G2. And honestly, you could accept the argument of him being number one over Adam. So yes, people hyped about G2 heading into the year. People hyped about G2 with, with good reason, obviously tempered lowered reason for it given the gotta get that the, world's taste out of your mouth exactly but i think the a couple of weeks into the lec spring split will be a quick remedy for that one especially seeing these players like our number one adc hans sama that you mentioned take out the draven bro you can put in the kogma from this year another little pick adding into that champion pool that wrinkle of these unique ones that comes through that he is able to just absolutely obliterate and pop off on for the g2 samurai army so you look at these supports as a whole, you got Alvaro coming with his support or his AD carry Supa over from Movistar Riders. That's one rookie coming in. Zoelis high up here is one of, if not the most hyped up rookie coming into this whole scene to be not just a premier support in a premier league in the LFL, but my man was picking up MVPs and getting paired up on Rogue, a guy like Comp. That's one of the biggest W's of the offseason. Yeah, and I think that's that's really a big part of it is you got to be looking at number one. Well, if you're not paying attention to, you know, if you're only paying attention to LEC, you're missing out on Zuelas is one of the type of situations seeing clearly the type of caliber of player that he can be, not only the way that he was, you know, creative down in the bottom lane in that support role, but the synergy he's able to develop. That is going to be a big thing for me looking at who he's joining up with, with comp, because I think that's the one thing we didn't quite really see almost all of last year was, you know, with him and where they were struggling that synergy was lost. Getting it back in that bottom lane for him, excelling a player like Comp to be a premier ADC, so Ellis is going to be a perfect fit for that. Two big question marks uh, from some veterans on the support list. Number one is Ignar returning to the LEC after a resurgent year with NRG that I don't think many people saw coming, him playing at that high level. And then Mr. Hill is saying one of the godfathers of support in europe because that world's run was so bad for him specifically we're looking for a bounce back for him in a big way and i'm expecting it because this guy is untiltable undeniable i'm a believer i'll believe in it uh, time and time again i'm ready to get burnt by hilla saying and the wacky plays the wacky theories that come through I'm still here for it. I'm still willing to give it a shot with him at this point in his career. Ignar is another risk as you laid out. Another player that I think you're really banking on it being that engaged support meta. Because if it's rolling enchanters, you've taken quite a dip. And yeah, especially with a guy like Patrick, who I feel like at times was the featured guy for Excel. And they were constantly trying to boost him up. Now with a rookie mid laner, they might rely on him more, which means... You might be seeing more supportive picks out of Ignar. So we'll see how that ends up going. Last guy on that board I want to highlight is number two, BDS Lebrov. Because this guy, after the debacle that was Vitality, the least known name was getting scapegoated. And he came on to BDS and just at the world's run in the summer split, he became 
the standout guy that I could not take my eyes off of because his engages were so clean and just across the board, this guy is now in the upper echelon of supports in Europe. I think it just solidified to me not not only a couple things that we had been you know keeping track of with someone like LeBron, but number one, of course, not the problem with what went wrong with the vitality of that time around, and certainly a player that loves the big stage. He loves those bright lights. He says, bring on the big moment. I'm going to be here for the boys. I'm here for the squad. He was absolutely someone you could count on in the toughest of moments for BDS. He was a very solid performer and someone that I think is not getting nearly the type of credit for what he can contribute to one of these squads, and especially a BDS squad that is now readjusting their expectations, readjusting those goals to be at the very tippity top of the LEC. I think LeBrov is a support that you can get you there. A lot of new faces and new places for 2024, and I guarantee you the Rookie of the Year is going to be a whole lot more contested than Yike dominating it last year. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for watching, as always, and we'll catch you on that flippity-flip.